1172, for the good of the realm, Emperor Thorstein Monad had the leaders of five separate and ongoing plots against the crown hanged, in a show of power and defiance of the high nobles of Vanon. That same year, yet another revolt was declared in response to this, once again attempting to lower the crown authority. In the east, the Tamatarka Federation ceased to exist, losing out to the Philippopolis Federation. Finally, in 1179, the most recent revolt was over, and Venonia at last returned to peace. Meanwhile, Pope Leo VII called the Eighth Crusade in 1185 upon the Sultanate of the Maghreb, and for whatever reason, all was quiet in Europe while it raged. By 1188, the Crusade for the Maghreb was successful, establishing the Kingdom of Afrikia, and the chatter and intrigue of the continent resumed. In 1189, the long-suffering Emperor Thorstein was able to avoid yet another revolt by enacting an ambitious and possibly very dangerous plan. As an emperor, he bestowed lesser kingdom titles upon loyal vassals within his empire. The hope behind this was that those vassals who did not rebel, being put into positions of great power, would ward off future attempts on his throne, or attempts to change how the office of emperor worked. Meanwhile, in Eastern Europe, the Kingdom of Polska formed the Krakow Federation with several of its neighbors, thus doubling in size and claiming a channel to the Baltic Sea. During this time, a minor adventurer tried to claim the throne of Venonia, but Emperor Thorstein defeated him in single combat, ordering his name struck from the records. Such a move proved unpopular with the sworn brothers of St. Arlo the Evangelist, and a cloud hung over the church of St. Guthlac. After this, he began to be called the Confessor by his secular contemporaries for his faithfulness and almost religious devotion to the Empire, saving it time and time again, and handling every threat, from within and without, with perfect skill. In 1202, after Brage had been inherited by the struggling Kingdom of Navarra, the Emperor set his sights upon their ill-defended acquisition. Thirsting for some glorious conquest, he perhaps unwisely declared war and sailed 8,000 men to Braj and 12,000 to their Iberian holdings, which were already shrinking in the face of the Ossetans. This combined force was more than double their entire army at 7,000 men. The first great victory of the Braj War claimed two northern counties, which were taken with little effort by 1205. Meanwhile, in January of 1206, the Burgos Federation was formed, uniting the Catholic Iberians that felt insecure in the face of Ossetan expansion, the two Lombardias which had reconciled due to the threat of papal expansion, Croatia, a handful of Germanic states, and most of the Italian holdings in the Maghreb. Under Imperador Luis the Bold Ortega, the Burgos Federation commanded 77,000 men at the time of its founding. Unfortunately for Navarra, because they were in the midst of war, they were unable to join the new empire. Such a thing was a death knell for the viability of their realm. However, they were able to breathe when, on the 11th of October 1207, Emperor Thorstein the Confessor Monad died at the age of 53 after a period of illness. His son, Emperor Alistair III, ascended to the throne at the age of 30, and continued his father's attempted conquest of northwestern Gaul. King Alistair III Monad was a very well-liked monarch, and engaged in revelry often with his vassals. He was not as confrontational as his often gloomy father, and in this way he won many allies at court through his sociability. In 1215, something mightily unexpected occurred. A thundering horde of mounted barbarians came rushing out from beyond the edge of the world, and upon their arrival, the Yekimongol Ulus conquered the ancient tribal kingdom of Bilar in the east, stealing away their title forever. Khan Temujin the Victorious arrived as the Storm of the East with a horde of 112,000 men. However, at the time, he was only giving grief to the pagans, especially those of the Krakow Federation, so Christendom failed to pay much attention. As such, in March of 1218, Pope Nicholas VI called the Ninth Crusade this time for Abyssinia, hoping to connect and support the crusader state of Ifriqiya in the Maghreb. In 1218, Emperor Alistair III, having produced enough claims on foreign lands during peacetime, 
first picked up the war with Navarre for the rest of the counties of Braj still hold by Navarre. He raised 21,000 men to sail to their shores, 8,000 to Braj, and 13,000 to their homeland. That same year, Emperor Alistair III killed Roy Bowman de Cominge of Navarre in single combat during the Battle of St. Malo in Braj. Thus, the war would be won less than a year later, and Bryce would pass from pitiable Navarre to the Gold Dragon of Venonia. His father had been successfully avenged. Even with the great victory over Navarre, the neighboring kingdom of Ypres still held certain counties belonging to Bryce, which had been inherited by Venonia. Certain of his victory against the well-matched Roy Frederick the Dragon, Emperor Alistair III waited only until his men had recovered and declared war. By the time he went yet again to war in 1221, Alistair III commanded 57,000 men, more than any other Vannon king before him. 31,000 men were raised to thoroughly crush the despised king of Ypres, who met the Vannon force with a paltry army of 2,500. Near his capital, however, he raised a surprisingly large force of 26,000 men, only a fraction of them hired. In another surprising decision, Frederick the Dragon marched this force away from his capital to defeat the smaller Venonian army which landed in Braz. An unexpected defeat was suffered at the Battle of Avranche, and Frederick showed the world how he earned his title of the Dragon. This forced Alistair III to withdraw his troops from the enemy capital and combine his forces into one 33,000-man army. In a rage, Alistair III laid ruthless siege to Frederick's Gaulish holdings, assaulting them over and over again, instead of waiting for them to fall, as would usually be advisable. Once his castles there were ground into dust and his main force defeated by a gargantuan army, Frederick the Dragon surrendered in 1222. This did not satisfy the Emperor, however, and in 1225, Alistair III waged yet another war for the last lingering claim controlled by Ypres. With memories of their great king humiliated on the battlefield and their honor trampled beneath Venonian boots, they raised every man, woman, and child willing to fight, forming an army of 17,000 strong. Despite their efforts, they were cut down just like their last army. They lost the war in 1227, and all of Bry's rightfully belonged to the Gold Dragon. That same year, the last Muslim would be expelled from Iberia by Asatania, triggering a decade of celebration across Europe. An uneventful ten years later, a claim would be produced upon most of Ypres, giving Venonia another foothold in Europe. Ypres and its indefatigable people had become an obsession of Alistair III during the decade of peace, and thus was itching for an excuse to declare war on them. And so he did, producing a force of 30,000 Vannon knights. He sailed from the Wash into the Nord Sea, planning to then march through the lowlands into Ypres to avoid a naval battle at landing. Emperor Alistair III led this great army and fought the grand host of Ypres at the hard-won Battle of Odendard. 30,000 Vannon soldiers versus 23,000 Knights of Ypres. 17,000 men in total died that day, leaving the Vannon forces with 20,000 men and the forces of Roy Grishard the Cruel with 15,000. Despite these unexpectedly heavy losses, Alistair still laid relentless siege to the capital of Ypres. During the siege, a portion of Ypres forces unexpectedly landed in Venonia itself. A force of 11,000 had occupied Sudsax, and so the shocked High Lords of Venonia responded with an army of 18,000. The invaders were only barely repelled, and Roy Grishard the Cruel, when he realized all was lost after the failure of his secret plan, surrendered half his kingdom in 1239. Here, the old and wise Emperor Alistair III of Venonia saw his mission begin to come together. Having humiliated Ypres, he developed a new obsession, wishing for the Channel to come completely under the dominion of the Gold Dragon tearing a long coastline from Gaul to ensure its dominion and prevent any more invasions, like had been clandestinely carried out in the most recent war. This project, however, was a war for another day. Months after the victory in Ypres, a rather small faction of disgruntled nobles desirous of greater autonomy declared a revolt to lower the crown authority in Venonia. On the 19th of December, 1240, Emperor Alistair III died of severe stress at the age of 64. 
His son, Emperor Alistair IV Monad, inherited the throne at the age of 27, and the revolt to lower crown authority was soundly put down a year later.